Christmas is all about Jesus. Welcome to Grace Digital Presentation. In this video, we shall be discussing Christmas is all about Jesus. Christmas season is typically a time for celebration globally. The joy and excitement is so palpable, you can almost touch it. It is a time we love to give gifts to friends, colleagues, family members, and even strangers because of the love and joy of this unique season. All around us, there is so much shopping, music, and bright decorations. Then there are sounds of Christmas carols emanating from different angles, keeping the mood warm for Christmas. Everyone, regardless of religion or lack of it, seems to celebrate the joy of Christmas. However, in all of these, the devil has caused many to forget the essence and purpose for the celebration we see or experience. It is easy to get so caught up in the celebration till debauchery and vulgarity takes over. But as students of God's word, we should not be caught unawares or deceived by our adversaries. 2 Corinthians 2, 11, AMP says, To keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. When we say Merry Christmas, we acknowledge Christ as the Savior and Redeemer of the world. The word Christ is an anointed and powerful word that subdues demonic or diabolical forces in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. Jesus must never be erased from the memory of people, as he is the reason for the Caesar. It is important to understand and spread the purpose of our Christmas celebrations. For Jesus himself knew the reason for his birth. Even up to the point of his crucifixion, he never shifted ground. John 18, 33 through 40. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time for the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back to him, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. He declared that he was born to be a king, and this was so evident on the day of his birth. Now let's dig into the story behind the birth of our king in the very first Christmas celebration. The story of Christmas started with an angelic visit to a virgin called Mary in Luke 1, 27 through 36 and 38 AMP. It says, To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Listen carefully. You will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and eminent, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob, Israel, forever and his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin and have no intimacy with any man? Then the angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, the holy, pure, sinless child shall be called the Son of God. And listen, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who is also called barren is now in her sixth month. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel left her. The angel's assignment was to inform Mary ahead of time that a Savior was to be born, and she was found to be a worthy vessel through which the Savior was to be born. 
she found favor in the sight of God. The angel also revealed to her how it would happen. This was in response to her questions on how it would happen since she was a virgin at the time of the angelic visitation. The story continued in Luke 2, 1 through 7 AMP. Now in those days, a decree went out from the emperor Caesar Augustus that all the inhabited world, the Roman Empire, should be registered in a census. This was the first census taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went to register for the census, each to his own city. So Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register with Mary, who was betrothed to him, and was with child. While they were there in Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her son, her firstborn. And she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no private room for them in the inn. The only available space they could find was the manger, and baby Jesus couldn't wait any more. The next thing that happens in Luke 2, 8 through 20 AMP, shows how important the birth of this Savior would be. In the same region, there were shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For this day in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. And this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Then suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, angelic army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph, and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were astounded and wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, giving careful thought to them and pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it has been told them. This angel became the first publicist that informed humans about the birth of Jesus on that first Christmas night. He even told them the exact location where they would find Jesus. After confirming what the angel told them, they went out to the city to spread the good news of Jesus' birth. So the next time you wonder why there is a lot of singing at Christmas, it is good to know that the reason is because the angel called Jesus' birth, the arrival of good news and great joy. Then that heavenly host started to praise God for his gift to men. The story of Jesus' birth concludes with the wise men from the east in Matthew 2, 1 through 12 AMP. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, Herod the great, Magi, wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem asking, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. So he called together all the chief priests and scribes of the people and anxiously asked them where the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed was to be born. They replied to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophet Micah. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are not in any way least among the leaders of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly sent for the Magi and learned from them the exact time the star had first appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me, so that I too may come and worship him. After hearing the king, they went their way, and behold, the star, which they had seen in the east, went on before them, continually leading the way, until it came, and stood over the place where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. 
and after entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then after opening their treasure chests, they presented him gifts fit for a king, gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. And having been warned by God in a dream not to go back to Herod, the Magi left for their own country by another way. Now the story of the wise men is the reason behind the gifts people share during Christmas season. It was a significant part of the event of the birth of Jesus. In conclusion, we must consciously remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Yes, we should celebrate, but let's have it in mind that we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world and God's best gift to mankind. Have a Merry Christmas and a fulfilling New Year.